Ezekiel chapter 30. 30. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 30. 30 yeah. We uh, pretty much are people who are interested and concerned about what is going on in the world, and especially what, what's happening in America. What's happening in China? What's happening in Europe? We get concerned, don't we? And we think that it's bad. But I want you to see the horror. And think about today, we as people of America, and all the people of the world. God has men and women in his army. God in the old days spoke to the prophets. Ezekiel was one of those prophets. Are we willing to let God use us? I know I'm not a prophecy preacher. That's not my calling. But there was a time that prophecy was a great thing. And Ezekiel in the 30th chapter said the word of the Lord came again unto me. Again. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come to ask you, Lord, to bless yes, the reading of your word today. Lord. Open the eyes of his understanding, Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would take and use the word. Bless him and anoint him, Lord. Your Father, that would you, Lord, and that it accomplish put something in our put in our spirits and our hearts, Lord, to understand and to know what is happening in the world today. And to know, Lord, that judgment is coming. Not only upon America, but upon the whole world. Use this, O Lord. Let thy word, Father, not be turned void, but let it be profitable. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Ezekiel said, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, and he called him son of man. Prophesy and say, or prophesy is to preach. Tell the people, prophesy what I'm saying. This is a word from the Lord God. He said, Son of man, prophesy, preach and say, not what Ezekiel was to say, but what God is saying. Do we take time to listen? What is God saying to us? To say to the world, to say to the people in the times that we're living in. Thus saith the Lord God, How ye, woe, worth the day. It's a warning. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. Do we believe that? Yes. It's a cloudy day. 
And it shall be the time of the heathen. Is there ever a time that the heathen are raging? And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia. When the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down. Have you wondered what God is saying? us he's prophesying here that great pain shall be in Ethiopia there is great pain there's great sorrow there's great calamity here in our land there's times when the slain shall fall he said in Egypt they shall take away her multitude and her foundations shall be broken down. What is our foundation? What's the foundation of our nation? Who's in charge? Who who's, makes the decisions? And who enforces the government, the laws of the government? Is our foundation shaken? Yes. Especially in the ending of these four years, past four years, a new, time, a new election is coming. And what is going to happen in America or around the world? Not only was Egypt going to feel great pain, not only was they the one, only one, they wasn't, because even in Ethiopia, see, there's going to be great pain in Ethiopia. Then there was going to be slaying falling into Egypt. And then their, their multitude was going to be taken. Her foundation was going to be broken down. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people and Trub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. See, God sends warnings. He prepares us to let us know. Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of their power shall come down from the tower of Sani, shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. See, God has spoken. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And when I have set a fire in Egypt, and when all her helpers shall be destroyed. And in that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them as in the days of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations shall be brought to destroy the land. And they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. And I will make the land waste and all that is therein by the hand of strangers. I, the Lord, have spoken. 
Can we stop for a moment? Can we imagine this morning in our mind when God looks at the situation that the world is in today, when God looks at a nation called America, a nation that was at one time a God-fearing nation, and I'm not saying there's still people who's God-fearing, but we have been following little by little, year by little, for a long, long time. And we have forgotten that God sees and knows everything that is going on. He remembers the time that this nation was a praying nation. A nation that really and truly feared God. A nation that sought for liberty. A nation that had respect. Neighbors respected na neighbors. The world respected us as Christians. They respected women as women. But what has happened? What's happened to the respect? What has happened that we cannot see that life is a gift from God and life is a wonderful thing? And all deserve to have a good life. Why should we try to shorten our lives through the disobedience and not willing to obey the Word of God? We have brought ourselves into a situation similar to what God saw here with Egypt and Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia. God sees us today. Is God grieved in His heart that this nation is in the turmoil that it's in? Does God care? Yes, God cares. But God is a just God and judgment will be given. And judgment must begin where? In the house of God. Going back to the 11th verse of chapter 30 in Ezekiel. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations shall be brought to destroy the land and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land in the hand of the wicked and I will make the land waste and all that is therein by the hand of strangers. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Hey, it's time to pray. It's time to repent. Before we are sold in the hands of strangers, before we give it unto the wicked, let us stand up. Let us protect what God has given us. Let's refuse to let the wicked have the blessing that God has given us. Let America turn back to God. Amen. That's what will make America great again. It's when we turn back to God and fear God. What if this would happen to us? What if God would decide to dry up our rivers? What if God would decide to sell the land into the hand of the wicked and make our land a land waste and all is therein by the hand of strangers? Yes. That's what God said to Ezekiel to tell these countries, cities. And thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols and I will cause their images to, to cease out of... Nope. 
and there shall be no more a prince of the land of Egypt, and I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. And I will make Pathras desolate, and I will set fire in the land, and will execute judgment in Nub. And I will pour my fury upon sin, the strength of Egypt, and I will cut off the multitude of Nub. And I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain, and no shall be rent asunder, and look shall have distress daily. And the young men of Avon and of Phibseth uh, shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. This is what God said, I will, I will, I will. Does he have any respect or person? No. Is God going to deal with sin and corruption? Yes. Did he not deal with Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes. Did he not deal with Babylon? Yes. And is he not going to deal with Egypt and Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all these Cities? Yes. He says and tells him what he will do. At the happiness, happiest also the day shall be darkened when I shall break thee the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her, as for her a cloud shall cover her, and her daughters shall go into captivity. And thus will I execute judgment in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The Lord. I am the Lord. Do we have to let things like this happen to wake us up? Does God need to execute judgment against America? Yes. Sure. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Here's what God did. I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a roller to bind it, to make it strong to hold the sword. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, the strong, and that which was broken, and I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. Amen. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and will disperse them throughout the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand, but I will break Pharaoh's arms and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. Amen. God is in control. Using Babylon to chastise. What is God going to use to chastise us? If he used Babylon to chastise them, what's he going to use to chastise us? Yes. But I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among all the nations, and disperse them among the countries, they shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Do we know that He is Lord? Let us not forget that He is Lord. And let's never forget that He is in control and He knows all things. No matter how great or how small, He knows all things. He even knows the hidden things. The secret things in the hearts of men, He knows. 
there is no hiding place. What's done in secret will be brought to life. And it's happening now. There's things that's happened in years past that is now being revealed. And it's time, America, that we wake up and put God back in our lives. Put prayer back in our schools. I pray that you will think upon the things that I have read. And I believe God is working. And I believe this word is a word to open our eyes and to, to see as this was an example. And it was a reality. It was, it's not just a fairy tale, it's just not a story, but it's a real happening. God does send warnings. God does have mercy. But he's also a God of wrath. We want to say, we, we like to believe God is love. Yes, God is love. And God is merciful. But he also is a God of wrath. And he will pour out his wrath upon the children of disobedience. So we today as Americans, as believers, let us realize who we are. And understand that he is not only a God of love, but He is also a God of wrath. This is all that the Lord's laid on my heart. I know it's been short today. But let's listen. Let's keep our minds and hearts open. And let's listen. What is the Lord saying today to America? as ministers of the gospel, as teachers of the word, let us listen. Let us listen and hear what thus saith the Lord. The seven church angels The angel sent a message to all seven churches. And God told them the things that he had somewhat against them. He saw their works. He saw their faithfulness. He saw their imperfections. And they saw where some were better. But somewhere he reminded them not to forget their first love. Let us not forget our first love. Because this God that we say is a God of love is also a God of mercy, but he's also a God of wrath. He will not condone sin and He will not condone evil. There will be a day come and it will be hard to sit and watch a nation be torn apart like Egypt and Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and how all the mingled people and the men of the land that was in league would fall by the sword. So may 
I have said something today that will put your mind to thinking. And let's meditate upon this. If you're watching this video on YouTube, think about it. Get your Bible and read the 30th chapter of Ezekiel and see what God was telling Ezekiel to say and to prophesy or to preach in that day and in that time. And think about what is God saying to us today. I want to ask Brother Jody Brown if he will, if he will dismiss us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God Lord, as we come to you today, God Lord Jesus. Lord, I just love you and I praise you and I thank you, God Lord, yes. for all your blessings. God Lord, yes. I thank you, God Lord, for your hand of protection. God Lord, I thank you for the word today. Lord, as it goes forth today, God Lord, may it bring us back to the remembrance of who you are. Yes, Lord. And who we represent, God yes, Lord. Yes. God Lord, I thank you and praise you, God Lord, that Lord, you did mention America, God, Lord, in the Bible. God, Lord, a lot of people say that America is not mentioned in the Bible. It's a country that's never mentioned. But, God, Lord, we are a country, Lord, of mingled people that came together, God, Lord, yes, to Lord. make this country. God, Lord, I know it's divine. Uh, uh, appointment, God, Lord, was to uh, uplift Israel, God, Lord. But it's time, God, Lord, to come forth, God, Lord, and minister, God, Lord, into the world again. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you, God, Lord, through these noble times, God, Lord, through me. Broken hearts, God, Lord, yes, many Jesus. things that's going on, God, Lord. I pray, God, Lord, help us be the men that we need to be, the ministers we need to be, God, Lord, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the lost and dying world, God, Lord, before the time is at hand, God, Lord, to go in the rapture, God, Lord, that we may be set free, God, Lord, as a nation once again, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget to service tonight at 6 o'clock.